Does heat affect sound quality? This question comes from Chris in Cape Town, South Africa. And Chris writes to me and he says, Hey Paul, does the temperature produced from the amp or any other device in the reproduction change influence the sound quality? In short, is active cooling necessary or is it just advisable to separate heat sensitive devices and not stack them? Well, that's a really good question. So, hmm, we're really lean here. <laughs> um, lazy, McGowan. Heat does affect equipment. It affects sound. It affects longevity. It is the enemy of electronics because with heat, we can have electrolytic capacitors that will dry out over time if they're not properly sourced. So like when we build a product that generates heat, we pay particular attention to those components, such as electrolytic capacitors, to be designed to handle the heat. So your off-the-shelf electrolytic capacitor that you might find in the power supply, for instance, is rated up to, oh, I don't know, uh, 70, 80 degrees uh, C. And, um, and, and, and that's rare that you're ever going to get that hot inside. But there's a difference between what their ultimate maximum rating is in order to continue to operate and how long they last under heat conditions. So, so, so you, have to, you have to know both of those factors when you're ordering parts. So we order special capacitors that have long lives when in a heated situation. But does it affect sound quality? Well, certainly every product that reproduces sound will change its operating points with various temperatures. So when a circuit is cold, it is going to operate in one manner and sound one way and then as it heats up it's going to change the way it sounds and it's going to measurably change its performance. That's because transistors, vacuum tubes, all manner of electronics operate and perform differently under different temperatures. For example, transistors when they get hot start to conduct more and we have to have special circuits on our power amps called VBE multipliers that measure the heat and adjust the current to compensate because as that heat goes up, the transistor begins conducting more and if, and you can get into a runaway cycle, which is thermal runaway, and you get too much uh, heat and then more, uh, then more conductivity, more energy flows through, more heat, and it gets into this loop and all of a sudden, zoop, and it burns up. I've had lots of smoke and flame in my day <laughs> as I'm designing amplifiers. Oops. Um, and so we have these things, that, like I say, VBE multipliers, which is, uh, if you want to know how that works, it's kind of simple. A VBE multiplier is, a, is another transistor mounted to the same heat sink. So we know that as I just explained, as temperature goes up, so does conductivity and we start drawing more current. Well, the VB multiplier does exactly the same thing, but instead of it being in a position where it draws more current and it's hooked up to the power supply, it's actually drawing more current and closing down this way uh, and, and, and changing the bias of, of devices. I, I'd have to almost draw it for you, but we just flip it around and use it to advantage to turn the current down. So yeah, things do change. Uh, you actually want them not to be cold. You want them to warm up. That's why we turn things on, you know, for if you come out for a tour, we're going to have turned, if we know you're coming, we're going to turn it on maybe 30 minutes before. If, if we don't, um, when, when you start at the beginning of the tour, somebody runs up here and switches the system on. Because our tours take half hour, 45 to an hour. And as you're running around oop, and seeing all the, the stuff at PS Audio, the system is warming up because it will sound different and perform different. So 
Yeah, I, I would be careful if you have equipment that generates a lot of heat. I don't think you need to force cool it. I don't think you need to liquid cool it or do any kind of cool stuff. Just, just keep an eye on it. You don't want things too hot to the touch, and that's a good, that's a good uh, indicator. But good question. Thank you, and uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow.